Now, if you look at the first quarter of Capital Mall Trust report, you realize that the figures actually look quite good. Let me pull out for you to quickly see over here. You realize that net income actually increased. How can that be? Actually, first quarter is only on 1st of January to 31st of March, which means most of the circuit breaker, or most of these lockdown measures have not really been implemented yet. That is why net income has actually increased. They've only held back the distributable income, which means they're keeping back cash flow. But actually, the first quarter, they did see quite good results. And in the same report, let me show you this over here. They also reported that from January to April, the drop in terms of footfall was only about 40%. But I was actually at Funan Mall yesterday. Let me show you this picture, this selfie. You realize that the mall is so empty. I was one of the five or 10 people really moving around to take away food and stuff. And although I do know that Funan Mall is not in the suburbs, it's not in the neighborhood, unlike some other malls, Funan Mall is just an example whereby traffic is much worse than it used to be. So today, this topic, is retail malls really worth to be invested into retail REITs? Is Capital Mall Trust, what is the fate of it moving forward? We have a discussion on this part of the business. Hi guys, welcome back. Now, I'm sure you've been to one of the Capital Malls before. But just in case you didn't know, the top three revenue contributors are as follows. Let me pull out for you quickly see over here. Number one is actually in Raffles City. Number two is actually in Plaza Singh. Number three is IMM. Now, as you can see in that infographic, there's certain concentration risk when it comes to investing into Capital Mall Trust previously. But moving forward, just in case you haven't seen the news, announced as of 22nd January, there'll be certain merger. Capital Mall Trust will be merging with its sister company, Capital Com Trust. Now, with this merger, this is going to be a mega entity, which is going to be like the top few biggest in size, reads wise And the objective of it is to reduce concentration risk for both shareholders. In any case, Capital Comtrust will be converted, the shares will be converted at 0.72 and there will be a cash payout of 25.9 cents. So do get familiar with these numbers moving forward if you are invested in any of these shares itself. Now I also want to touch on something quite interesting. You know, I've also seen this from Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg has also mentioned that he's encouraging workers to work remotely. Not only him. If you look at what Twitter CEO is mentioning, he, he allows staff to work permanently from home. Not only him also, there's another third CEO, which is Shopify CEO. And he also mentioned that he believes that of office centricity is going to change permanently from this pandemic. Now, I don't know about your viewpoint. Of course, tech firms can allow people to work easily from home. But I do believe that moving forward, offices will still have certain appeal and that they are not going to be as volatile as retail malls. That's why today's discussion is really on retail malls. And I have certain findings for you in the next section. Now let's move on the first quarter 2020 financial performance. And as you can see over there in the left, the gross revenue actually increased. But before you celebrate, that again is from January to March, which means the ugly effects of this pandemic, the circuit breaker, the, the social distancing measures, retail outlets not being able to open, have not been reflected in this performance. The real pain is going to come in for second quarter as well as moving forward. So now let's answer second quarter, what kind of impact is it going to show? Uh, as we know, Capital Mall Trust actually gave a two months off for rental for all its tenants, which means that you know tenants don't need to pay, they don't collect money, but actually government has actually subsidized portion of it through property tax rebates. And let me show you this by, by CIMB research. It shows that out of pocket, Capital Mall Trust is going to lose only 0 0.8 months of rental income. Not too bad, second quarter is going to see only 0 0.8 months loss. But my real concern is actually moving forward. You know, in this channel, I've always advocated, if you want to invest into a particular company, you must come with company-specific risks, and you must be long-term in terms of how you approach investing in that company. You should be comfortable for the three-year and time year, three and five-year time frame for Capital Mall Trust also. But the real challenge is moving forward. Is the occupancy rate going to be as high as previous years? That's my, that's my real concern. And when I look deeper into the tenant mix, I realized that most retail malls actually have majority in F&B, which is true. When you step into any mall, the first floor is always F&B outlets where they sell alcohol, high-end food, fast food, etc. etc. Because F&B actually brings a lot of money to malls itself. The per square foot is at least $30 if you're on first floor because that's prime, prime land. So for Capital Mall Trust, you realize that its other top uh, rental income sources are in beauty and health, fashion and departmental store. All these four contribute more than 50% of gross rental income. That's a bit concerning because these are one of the hardest hit 
from this pandemic itself. And you know, I have a previous video that actually suggests that F&B businesses, a lot of which will go bust, and a lot of which are struggling to actually replace that loss of revenue when they are unable to charge for, for dining customers, where there's service charge, there's alcohol purchases. They cannot solely rely on takeaway to sustain what they used to do, which means they can't afford that kind of $30 per square foot rent. So there's another concerning point from Cadillac More Trust. Let me show you this actually, the portfolio lease expiry profile. What we can see over there is for 2020, 11.9% of leases would expire. That is, that is not too big, but nonetheless, at this current climate, I don't believe any, any business will readily take up a new rent so willingly when there's so much uncertainty, which means 11.9%, how much are they able to convince to, to renew moving forward and some of which are just going to default. There's certainly going to be some risk that, you know, uh, the occupancy rate for malls are going to drop moving forward. And that will also impact for 2021, which has quite a lot more that is going to expire, 28.5% more going to expire for Capital Mall Trust. So this period is going to be hard. There's certainly going to be some tenants moving out and very difficult to replace. And for a REIT manager, they have to decide whether they drop rent, which is going to, you know, impact long-term profitability, anger some of these existing tenants and stuff, already keep it empty and show lack of occupancy. So it's, it's a decision that management needs to make, but it's, it's a bit concerning for me as an investor. Now, if something interesting to show you from DBS's report, they actually did a stress test for Singapore REITs. And before that, let me invite you to smash the subscribe button because we'll be launching videos every week to help you in your financial journey. And again, smash your like so that more people can see valuable content like this. Now, DBS actually did this stress test report. And in this one of which, it, uh, caught my attention, which is this interest coverage ratio. What that means is a REIT's ability to pay off interest payments with its income. And this goes to show if the income drops by 75%, Capital More Trust is actually still able to repay its interest, which means it's pretty good. It's not going to default that easily. In any case, 75% decline in, in, in earnings is actually pretty extreme because there's always anchor tenants like N2C, and BreadTalk, which are not going to default by any case. Only the smaller F&B outlets are really in trouble. So again, that 75% decline is really, really extreme. And nonetheless, it goes to show that Capital More Trust is still likely going to survive. Even if a drop in earnings, they can still pay off their interest. So the second key part is to help you understand, you know, what kind of valuation do you want to purchase Capital More Trust with? I have this to show you. This is actually a five-year comparison in terms of its property valuation and what we can see is it's been increasing every year why does this number keep increasing a simple reason is because along the years when there's a good economy and stuff there's a lot of tenant competition which means they can keep increasing the rates from 30 per square foot to 31 per square foot to 32 per square foot so when they are able to collect more rental income naturally the property valuation increases with it but right now in this current pandemic if they have to revise rental rates downwards that will also mean property valuation should also drop. So to give you a further sensing on what kind of entry price makes sense for you, I have this to show you over here by Maybank Kim Eng. It goes to show that price per book value has actually dropped below an average level. But having said that, it's still not the lows of the global financial crisis. During that period, it was close to 0 0.5 price per book value. As of this pandemic, prices have actually increased slightly already. So there's still some gap to its, its lowest point ever. But nonetheless, if you're investing again, invest for a long period of time. Don't, don't expect to catch the bottom, but this gives you just some sensing points. Now, Capital More Trust is definitely not the only retail read list in Singapore. There's actually one that's 100% focused on the retail sector, just in case you're bullish on it for whatever reason. That is none other than Fraser Centerpoint Trust. Fraser Centerpoint Trust owns some of the assets that you, you should be familiar with also. They include Causeway Point, they include North Point and they include Waterway Point. So just in case you live in Woodlands and Yishun, I'm sure you're visiting these outlets still regardless of you know, the lockdown and the circuit breaker. So nonetheless, Fraser Center Point Trust, I also want to show you the rental rebates. How much is it going to lose? That's going to be reflected in second quarter 2020. They've actually given a little bit more in terms of rental rebates to its tenants, 2.5 months to be exact. So out of pocket for them is 1.3 months. This will impact second quarter, which means about half of his rental income is going to be lost. But nonetheless, when you invest in them, look for long-term also. 
And just in case you are keen on a different sector, not retail, you're looking at supermarkets. I've actually a previous video on Seng Siong. If you're keen on Seng Siong, look for that tutorial. I've actually shared you know, why Seng Siong is actually benefiting from this pandemic. And some of the questions there might answer your curiosity on whether it's a different business, it's a more attractive business as of this current moment. With that, I'll sign off. Leave any comments you have in the sections below. I'll see you in a future video.